The primary objective of the National Lobster Hatchery is to undertake a stock enhancement program for European lobster within Cornwall and Yarza Scilly. In addition to this, we also undertake programs of research and education. Recently, we've taken on a PhD researcher, Carly Daniels, and Carly's work primarily focuses on the use of pre and probiotics in lobster culture. I've been in the hatchery for six years now. Uh, the last three years have been spent doing research as part of a PhD project. I've been researching the use of probiotics and prebiotics in aspects of lobster culture, from the egg stages all the way through to the juvenile stages when we release them. The idea of uh, probiotics all sounds a little complicated, but it's just the idea of friendly bacteria. Same as humans take uh, probiotic yogurts and drinks, we've got to find a way of getting these friendly bacteria into the diets of lobsters. The idea of prebiotics is slightly different from probiotics. They're not live bacteria. Prebiotics are actually non-digestible substances that can be added to the diet. Some prebiotics have been shown to remove the bad bacteria from the gut, and other prebiotics have been shown to act as a nutrient source for the good bacteria, allowing them to thrive. During the course of this research, I looked at using pre and probiotic supplements at all stages of lobster development. Normally, when we receive a buried or pregnant female, we would disinfect the eggs to remove the bad bacteria. For the purpose of this research, we investigated using probiotic solutions to dip the eggs and introduce good bacteria to the egg surface. The benefit of this is that when the larvae hatch, they will be introduced to the good bacteria rather than the bad bacteria, giving them a better start in life. After hatching, larval lobsters are transferred into chrysal cones, where they will spend the first two weeks of their life floating around. Larval lobsters are fed on live brine shrimp. In order to incorporate pre and probiotics into this diet, these supplements must first be fed to the brine shrimp. The larval lobsters will then receive the supplements when they eat the brine shrimp. Once lobsters reach the juvenile stage, they are separated into individual orkney pots. Juvenile lobsters are fed on formulated pellets. In order to incorporate the pre and probiotics into this diet, these supplements must be surface coated onto the pellet using oils. So that's how we introduce pre and probiotics to different stages of lobster development. But what has our research shown are the benefits of using these supplements? The main benefit is improved growth and survival. The main reason for this is the successful development of the gut, which is allowed by the addition of pre and probiotics and the removal of bad bacteria. In order to find out how successful our research was and how well the lobster developed, I had to spend a lot of time looking at photos of lobster guts. A lobster gut is very similar to that of humans. As the food passes through the gut, it is broken down into particles. These particles are absorbed by the gut wall and used by the body to grow. If the digestive tract works more efficiently, it can absorb more nutrients from the food particles, improving growth. The wall of the gut is folded. These folds are called villi. With more villi and more regular villi, the gut can absorb and digest nutrients more efficiently. With the introduction of pre and probiotics and the removal of bad bacteria, we found that the lobster guts develop more villi. On the villi are smaller folds called microvilli. In these photos, they almost look like tentacles. As with villi, if the gut contains more microvilli, it will absorb food and nutrients more efficiently. Our research showed that the density of microvilli was significantly improved with the addition of pre and probiotics to the lobster's diets. This research showed a reduction in the number of vibrio species present in the gut of lobsters fed with pre and probiotics. Vibrio are a type of bacteria known to be disease causing and potentially harmful to lobsters. Our research also showed enhanced immune response in juvenile lobsters. This was indicated by an increased blood cell count. This allows the lobsters to cope better in stressful situations such as disease outbreak, therefore increasing the chance of survival. Another positive outcome of this research was the stabilisation of bacterial populations in the digestive tract. This balance reduces the potential for the outbreak of harmful pathogens 
Overall, this research has shown great potential for the use of pre and probiotics at all stages of lobster development, producing larger, healthier lobsters for release back into local waters. This research project and others like it have helped the National Lobster Hatchery to develop and improve techniques using our lobster stock enhancement work. For me, it's been very hard work, but ultimately rewarding.